All right, class, so I'm not here today because uh, well, it's the eclipse day, so you already know what I'm doing. Um, so what we've got going on today is we're gonna be working on, we're working on our pinch pots and our coil pots. So you have a list of projects that you gotta get done. So you guys have a list of projects that you gotta get going on here. So going over some of our projects, now is the time we're gonna start making these things because you've got the skills into how to make a pinch pot and you also got the skills on how to make a coil pot. So we're going with the pinch pot, pinch pot with exterior decoration, pinch cup with handle and exterior decoration. The speaker, we're gonna hold off on that for a minute because I still gotta go over that with you. Uh, but we do have the coil base, 10 inches high, the cup with handle and exterior decoration, the bowl, uh, and another bowl is 10 inches. So let's start off with the basics here. Cups. Cups are kind of those things that we're going to go over and over again. So over here I've got some clay. Now, cutting myself off a couple sections. For these cups, let's start off with a pinch box cup. Now we have our pinch cup. Now I've got to take some extra clay and cut it for our handle. Now our handle itself should be a certain width. The reason it needs to be a certain width is so that it can hold up to the weight of the cup itself. Now, now we got to start talking about uh, dry time. Now as your clay dries out, it goes through a couple stages. Now the clay that we have, this is fresh greenware clay. Um, and it just means that it is fresh, it's got its full moisture content. Now as clay starts to dry out, it becomes a different texture overall uh, to what's called leather hard stage. Leather hard is when it kind of has a leathery quality to it and it will, and it's firm enough to where it'll hold up and stand on its own without any sort of bends. So as, as soon as this dries up some and it doesn't bend anymore, it's that leather hard stage. Now, I like to have my handles that I'm working on about the width of my thumb, at least that space size. And it just helps so that as I'm working on it and I'm adding detail to it, A, it looks good, uh, and B, it stands up to the weight that I'm, that I'm putting it through. One example I have is this cup over here. So, you can see the handle, nice wide arc, uh, and I've attached it outside the lip and at the bottom, just uh, about an inch from the base. Using a couple tools, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the clay over this in the desired shape. Now you've got two options. You can either A, slump it over material, such as a container like this, or uh, because how this is going to dry, I'm just going to set it down on my board standing up like this. It looks like an ear, the way that I've got it set up. So I've got it in my hand like this, you know, about like so. And I'm just going to set it down on the board to set up in that manner. So these are both gonna to sit to the side as the ink starts to dry out. Now, using some more clay, working on the coil. Now you can see as I'm adding the clay around this, I'm pinching and twisting at the same time. And what I'm doing is I'm taking my thumb on the inside of it and I'm pushing it down in as I'm pushing that clay in there. Now, once you have your clay uh, coil built piece done, you're then gonna take your clay, cut off, again, section for the handle. Now, you got two options. You can form it into the structure that you're gonna use. Except 
that up so that it will start drying on the board. That way, you, as these things dry out, then you'll add them together. As you guys are adding these pieces together, we're going to take some slip. So what's slip? Well, slip is where you take your slivers of clay like this. So taking those slivers of clay, we're going to set our stuff to the side, start mixing our potion. Now, if you want to make this up and let it sit while you're building pieces, by all means. So what we're doing is, as the clay is sitting in this water, it's going to start to degrade. It's going to start eroding off itself. And that is going to turn into this wonderful magical paste that we call slip. Now, using some of that slip, which is basically like mud, we're going to affix our handle onto our piece. So over here, I've got a divot where the clay is. I'm going to take a bit of my slip. And my piece. Now, also, you have these tools, uh, this is like a multi-tool. You can scratch the surface a little bit. Just give it a couple hash marks. Take some of that slip. Right to the top of the piece, on top of that, those marks that you put on there. And you take our handle and we fix it by pressing into those spaces so that those parts are held on there. And then going back with either the multi-tool or your fettling knife, whatever tool you got to smooth things around and smooth things up, make everything nice and pretty. So as you're putting things together, using that piece to hold it, smooth it together. Smooth any section where the clay is touching. And then you can carve in or remove excess clay using the trim tools so like in here, we want to make this smooth again. Using that trim tool to clean everything up. Might put our finger in a little bit of water to smooth out any cracks that we have on the outside of the piece. You also have the stamps that you can use on the outside unless you want to keep the texture that we have along the edges right here. Now, there's one other thing that you could do, which is taking your knife and a little bit of the water, or if you want to paint with water on there first, and tap. It'll give it like a craggy texture, which as the glaze goes on, the glaze has more of a surface to adhere to and it has this like craggy rock texture. Looks really cool. Now, using the butt hilt of my fettling knife, I'm tapping in the bottom to give my base a little more substance so that's more flat on the bottom, doesn't have that little bendy curve. And as always, make sure that on the bottom that you've signed your name, me, make sure that you uh, put your initials or your symbol on the bottom so we know whose is whose out of the kiln that you've dressed up every single crack make sure you kind of look at this fine-tune everything you want to make sure there's no cracks no breaks in the clay at all you make sure everything is sufficiently held in place and then you have one cup finish now as it says with exterior design use those stamps make a texture make something else on the outside by all means throw something down in your sketchbook so we can see what you guys are working with uh, but so that we have a nice finished piece so that when it comes out of the kiln we have a nice cup that'll hold a lot of liquid good handle make sure that it's that roughly the height of your cup is about the height of your hand that'll make sure that you have a nice uh, a vessel that's large enough to hold a nice cup of coffee or a nice cup of tea afterwards make sure you guys clean up and take care of the classroom as as always and i will see you guys next class later guys so guys in closing make sure that you guys take care of your space all stuff back clean the tables as well don't forget to work on those sketchbooks and as always i will see you guys next class later guys